It's just another day at the office for two biologists at the Pinnacles. It takes a special kind of person to go to work each day and actually look forward to rappelling off the side of a cliff. Gavin Emmons and Alicia Welch downplay the danger, but not everyone is willing to dangle anywhere from 50 to 100 feet above terra firma to care for cliff nesting raptors and endangered condors. Emmons and Welch work for the National Park Service, and their office is often the cliffs and the rock face at the Pinnacles National Monument near Hollister. Their duties include feeding, watching, and monitoring the California condors and the prairie and paragon falcons, along with tracking the birds. So who is exactly drawn to this type of job? Well, in Emmons' case, he was the nerdy, cool guy that used to sit next to you in your high school biology class, and if you were lucky, well, he let you cheat off his notes. To be honest, I've always been interested in wildlife. I mean, it's always been my passion, being outdoors and um, watching animals. As a kid, I grew up in Portland and both of my parents were always interested in um, hiking outside up in the Columbia River Gorge. And uh, I have a twin brother and he and I would always sort of root around for salamanders and lizards. And uh, one of our favorite pastimes was to look through taxonomic guides and to try to identify all of the species. <laughs> Gavin's partner in this high-altitude endeavor of monitoring birds is Alicia Welsh, who's also from the Pacific Northwest. She grew up in Seattle, but ended up going to a small liberal arts school, Grinnell College in Iowa. Just like Emmons, she was drawn to the outdoors rather than the lab life of most biologists. I really wanted to work in the field, and I really wanted to work with wildlife. So when I graduated, the idea was to find somewhere that I could go work <laughs> outside and with wildlife if possible. I applied for an internship here. Uh, it turned out that I got here through what's called the Student Conservation Association, and it's called the SEA. Um, they do internships mainly with federal agencies around the country. So I had applied for that, looked at all sorts of different ones, and this one came up. Um, I ended up actually working here with like habitat restoration and plants and things like that, uh, but was also able to get in early with working uh, with Gavin on the raptor monitoring program. So I was able to go out with him through the season, check out how you monitor raptors that are nesting. The condor program at the Pinnacles plays a vital role in trying to save these magnificent birds. California condors are one of the most critically endangered bird species in the world. Back in the 1980s, they were down to just 22 birds, many of which were lost to lead poisoning because the birds are scavengers. The condors would feed on dead animals that had been shot with lead ammunition, and ingesting the ammo fragments resulted in poisoning that devastated the bird population. Fortunately, through education with hunters and the public, they're back up to 350 birds in the world and about 150 or so in the wild. We manage a release site for California condors. There's only five of those in the world right now. And what that means is we, we receive condors that are reared in captivity from zoos, and we, we put them in a flight pen and we acclimate them to the site. And then we track them as we release them out into the world. We've got many mature birds now. Um, the total is 23, and we've got age groups within that but the, the older ones help guide the younger ones out into the world and learn how to forage on their own. Condors are the largest land soaring birds in North America, and they have a breathtaking nine and a half foot wingspan. That wingspan is a direct relationship to how far it can travel. Um, it's a, really a soaring and gliding bird. It doesn't, it doesn't flap its wings for powered flight the way that a falcon would. It just thermals up, it finds columns of air that are rising um, from di differential heating of the Earth's surface um, and thermals up into the sky and then glides to another one and uses, also uses coastal winds on mountain ranges to get from point A to point B. So it can cover well over 100 miles in a day. Um, the historic population covered even more when, they, when all the birds were wild prior to the captive breeding program. This brings us back to the duo of Emmons and Welch and their willingness to defy gravity in pursuit of their work. Gavin, his brother, and their parents always love the outdoors, and their family album is filled with photos of the twins 
hiking, camping, and enjoying more than a few campfires. Emmons would go on to graduate from Lewis and Clark College in Oregon, and after spending time at Carlsbad Caverns National Park, he eventually ended up at the Pinnacles doing raptor biology and rappelling off of cliffs. I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> I've been doing it since I've been here. I actually got started in New Mexico, at least on a real focused level, doing climbing. Um, I guess my first introduction to it was doing technical caving, which involves a lot of the same skills in terms of rappelling and ascending up a rope with different uh, mechanical gear. And then that kind of led to an interest in search and rescue techniques where you use some of the similar skills um, and expertise. And uh, it just kind of seemed natural when I got here to continue um, working with those skills. And just having such uh, close proximity to the cliffs here, it really uh, helped me to continue climbing in a focused way. And um, I mean, just kind of fell in love with the cliffs here on the rock and continued in that capacity. Alicia was also raised with a tremendous love of the outdoors and nature. From an early age, she was hiking and backpacking with her family and friends. She never lost her enthusiasm for being out in the wilderness and camping. That passion for nature continued through college, and eventually she started pushing herself by rock climbing. You know, I, I kind of got into it when I first started here at Pinnacles, which was five and a half years ago. Um, I happened to get here right before a technical search and rescue training began, and so I got in on that, which was really fascinating. That's all about how you raise and lower people off the side of walls, and um, as well as just getting to know Gavin. He was an avid rock climber, and so I got out and was learning from him just how to be on the wall and deal with ropes and everything that you need to know. Um, and then over the years, I've just continued to develop that and been really interested in, in being out there and doing this kind of work. Despite the fact that she loves what she's doing, Welch is the first to admit at times, rappelling down cliffs can get a little scary. I admit that I have definitely a, a bit of a fear of heights, especially right next to the edge. But as soon as I'm on rope, I really, you know, you do know that you're gonna be fine and that you're safe. Uh, it's just, when you're off of everything and you're just walking along over to the edge, that's where I get kind of spooked. <laughs> For some outsiders, Gavin probably has a dream job. That is unless, of course, you're afraid of heights. I think that the, the job is challenging um, in a number of ways. Uh, in terms of monitoring raptors, uh, a lot of people when I'm up in the high peaks and visitors stop by, they say, wow. That just sounds exactly like the type of job I'd like to do. But the reality is that sometimes you only see birds, um, either nesting birds or territorial falcons for a couple minutes. So you could be up there for three or four hours before you see birds. So really what keeps you going with it is that you love the, the, the birds and you're passionate about the wildlife. Um, as for climbing, I mean, it does have uh, some risk that's entailed in it. Um, you just have to be very careful with the gear that you're using. You have to have a very good knowledge of um, how you set up anchors, um, proper um, skills for climbing, different techniques that you use. Uh, I mean, for me, I'm not particularly afraid of heights, um, so I don't, I don't have that feeling when I go over the edge. And I just love that feeling of centeredness that you get when you're in contact with the rock and you're really forced to not think about anything else. And uh, it's, it's meditative for me. I, I really enjoy that. So if you're tired of life in an office or a cube, well, there are some exciting jobs out there. Just don't get your heart set on monitoring condors and falcons at the pinnacles, because there are two people already there that are very happy with their jobs. Just being out here, um, being able to you know, breathe in the clean air and to watch the animals on a daily basis, I mean, there's nothing better for me. I love it. Um, I love being able to go out and work in the field and you know, you just remember what it is you're doing here and, and why you love it. You know, it's just to get out there and to see new things and to experience new things and it just makes it totally worthwhile.